Today, I've got a back issue haul of mostly modern books, but a variety of characters, titles, creative teams with one unifying factor. Every book was just a dollar a piece. Check it out. Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris, and this is North Garden Comics. So the pile of books in front of you today is a back issue haul. All of these books were dollar books, and they all came from a sale called Everything Must Go Sale. This was hosted by Most Wanted Comics, one of my favorite places here in the Twin Cities to get dollar books historically, and they did it again. They held a sale at their warehouse where they were trying to reduce inventory, and yeah, so they said every book is a dollar regardless of the price that's on the book. So it was seemed to be a great sale for them where they were very busy, people filling boxes. Uh, they did have some uh, raw books that were just 50 cents a piece. I got a few of those I'll show you as well. But for the most part, these are dollar books. They helped me to fill in some runs, found a couple variants, even found a couple signed books, but all things that uh, I had been looking for. So let's get this stack out of the way and get to the books. All right, we're going to start things off with a, a nice little surprise that I found. This is Noctera number one from Image Comics. This is the 1 in 25 variant done by Jorge Jimenez. You can see his signature there on the bottom. And I wasn't expecting to find Noctera one. This book has gotten uh, some heat and become popular. I think it's only about seven issues in or so, so far. Uh, I did regret not getting issue number one when I had it available to me for pre-order. The biggest reason was because there was uh, solicited a glow-in-the-dark cover. And I thought that would have been super cool and very 80s, 90s nostalgia vibe to it. I decided not to get it and then never got a number one. But here now I have this... Uh, not terribly rare, but you know, not super common either. Jorge Jimenez variant for number one. And I would like to continue putting together this series as I can uh, from the back issues. That may mean I have to resign myself to some, you know, second or later printings on some of those issues because first printings are harder to come by depending on the issue, but very happy to find issue number one and to get this cool variant. Next up here, we've got a definitely 90s nostalgia uh, type of a vibe and the reason I bought it. I'm not collecting Web of Spider-Man. This is issue number 117 and it's got this reflective kind of metallic cover. I'm actually gonna take it out of the bag to highlight an error I made in buying this as well. So you can see here, it's got this reflective cover, and up top in the corner, I didn't really pay attention to this, but it says Fantastic Flip Book. Well, if you flip it over, yes, you do have another reflective cover on the back there, and at this sale, they had two copies of this book. One was bagged and boarded facing this way that I grabbed, and then another was bagged and boarded facing this way that I also grabbed, not paying close enough attention to the issue number. So I did wind up getting two of these, but um, yeah, it was just a, just a cover buy. Again, with that nice kind of reflective, I don't remember ever seeing this one in the past. Next up, we've got a three-part story that I was able to get all at once from this volume called Savage Wolverine. And the reason I bought it was for the artist who is Joe Maderera. Love his art style from the 90s in particular. Really got into him when he was doing stuff with the X-Men around the Age of Apocalypse time. And saw this story from Savage Wolverine and figured, sure, why not? I will get it. And I do want to give a special shout out to fellow YouTuber Eric Spagnuolo. Uh, Eric, if you're watching, this is the run I was talking about uh, in the comments I made on one of your videos, Eric had picked up, uh, was it Frank Cho, who had done the first three issues or so of this volume. But this is the story that I was referring to in those comments, Eric. For all of you watching, go check out Eric's channel. Very knowledgeable of the comics that he gets, but very similar in terms of looking for those dollar books and find some really cool, amazing books, uh, oftentimes at a dollar a piece. So I'll put a link to his channel down below. So definitely check him out. But coming back to the books here, we got Joe Madera on issue six. 
Very cool cover with issue seven. I guess Wolverine's strong enough to bite through a chain? I don't know, is there adamantium in his jaw? I imagine his jaw's covered, but his teeth? I don't know. You know, we don't, we don't question too much. And then there's a pretty cool cover with Electra on issue number eight. Again, a very distinctive style. Really like to, to pick up his artwork when I can find it. All right, shifting over now, this is Spider-Man. This is, I guess this is considered volume one. This was the 1990 series that was kicked off by Todd McFarlane. And that ran for like uh, 98 issues, I wanna say. And this is the latter part of that run. And John Romita Jr. Uh, was doing the pencils at this time. And I've been, ever since, you know, by the late fall of 2021, I've been getting into this more of a, a focused John Romita Jr. kick. I've always dabbled in some of his stuff and put together some of his storylines from when he did Captain America. And I was already, already working on his Thor run and um, some other things but hadn't focused in on some of these Spider-Man runs um, outside of what he did on Amazing Spider-Man. But this is Spider-Man from the 1990 series, and he did a bunch of issues towards the end. The issue numbers are hard to see on this, but that's issue number 65. He started his run in this volume, I wanna say it's in the low 60s. I think he did a cover on like 57, but then he picked it up in the 60s here. So I did, get a few of those issues at this sale. There's 65, there's 66, and then issue 70, 71, 73, and actually that's it for the John Romita Jr. stuff here. In some kind of upcoming videos, I will have much more to show you because I've been able to put together a lot more of this run that he did as well as the following run once this ended after issue 98 the title rebooted as peter parker spider-man and he did you know most of the issues over the first like 17 or so uh issues of that volume and i've been able to get many of those but those will come up in some future videos now we go over here to marvel comics presents um this is a title, I was only really trying to get the Weapon X storyline, uh, and I still have really only, only about half of those, but at a quarter sale that I was at, uh, was that maybe around Free Comic Book Day of 2021? Could have been Black Friday, I think it was Free Comic Book Day. But I found a bunch of the early issues from Marvel Comics Presents, and they all focus on you know, Wolverine, Cyclops, other X-Men related characters, and I love the X-Men, so I've decided to keep my eye out for these earlier issues when I can find them. And so uh, this sale, they had issue 17, and then issue 19, which this is another one I'll take out of the bag, but first I'll show you. Notice the price tag on there? $10, but I got it for a dollar. I don't know why this was a $10 book. Maybe because it's a Rob Liefeld cover? I don't know. I didn't look this up to see if there's any, you know, significance to the issue itself. But happy to get it for a dollar. And here we go. You can kind of see it's a a wraparound cover that Rob Liefeld did. And what year was this when he did this one? Okay, this is 1989. So, I guess early-ish Rob Liefeld work there. And then one other issue from that volume, Marvel Comics Presents, issue number 23. Completely shifting gears, here is a random Batman issue, number 456. This is an issue that I needed just to fill a hole. I was heavy into Batman when I first started collecting in the late 80s, early 90s, but I do have some gaps, so happy to fill in some of these holes when I can for cheap. Next, you're gonna see the 50 cent books that I referred to. This is another Joe Matarera, not just artwork, but a creation of his. He created this title, Battle Chasers, and it was a nine issue run, uh, I guess 10 technically, because I think it may have had a zero or like a, a prologue issue, but 
this is one I've been trying to piece together. Never had it originally when it came out. And with this issue number eight, I only now need issue nine to complete that volume. And so hopefully I will find it uh, this year and I'll be able to complete that volume. There's always that part of me that wonders, is something about Joe Matarera or Battle Chasers going to have a resurgence and then it'll cause all these issues to become really hot and you won't be able to find them for 50 cents or a dollar anymore. So I would love to find it before something like that were to happen. I don't know that that's going to happen, but you know, in this day and age, anything's possible. So Battle Chasers number eight, and this is kind of a, kind of a fantasy, fantasy series that follows something about these gauntlets uh, and the power that they hold but uh, do like his art. So I'm looking forward to finishing that off. Here's a, I, I'm calling this a 90s nostalgia purchase, but I never followed the Biker Mice from Mars. You know, I think this is probably, I don't even know if it was a parody, but clearly had a TV show. I think they had some toys. And this is the issue number one. And I got it because it was 50 cents. And it's just kind of harkens back to the 90s like that. This might have actually have like a little bit of value, maybe like 10 bucks, something like that. I don't know, but I got it just for fun. And then one other 50 cent book that I got also just for, I'll say the nostalgia, but I never collected Battle Beasts, which is a little surprising looking back at them now. These were toys that they each had one of these um, heat sensitive stickers on the toys that revealed whatever element gave them power, whether it was uh, fire, wood, water, and they would battle. And like I said, they had toys and there were something like 80 some odd toys. This is just black and white, but uh, it just seemed cool because it reminded me of childhood and these types of, of characters. I did look online to get a little bit more of the Battle Beast history. Uh, these are toys that were produced in Japan by Takara and then licensed to Hasbro in the US and apparently they share some kind of universe it may be with uh, with Transformers which is my A number one favorite franchise. Never knew that. That was something I learned but uh, they come from the planet Beasts. You know, super, <laughs> super original. But uh, yeah, they may have shared a universe with those original G1 Transformers or at least that was the intention at one point, but got that because that was fun. And if I had to rewind, if I was a kid today and these were out, totally would be into collecting those because like I said, there's like 84 of them. They were, they were pretty small figures, but it would be super cool to display on a shelf. Back to the dollar books. I found a few more issues of this era of Thor. I have been now for a while working on the Walt Simonson era of Thor. And the cool thing about two of these that I didn't even see at first, if you look down here at the bottom, you see that in black? That appears to be, the, and the line kind of crosses over the, the hammer and you get this big O, that appears to be a Walt Simonson signature on the cover. There's no certificate of authenticity to verify that, but pretty sure that that's what that is on issue 341. And then the same thing here, on issue 342, and in this one, you can see the actual Walt Simonson signature that's you know printed on the comic there. So you can see the striking similarity there. Super cool to have found those. Don't know the story behind them. The guys at Most Wanted Comics probably just acquired these in a collection at some point, but very happy to find those. And then I also got issue 343 and issue 345 so slowly but surely chipping away at the walt simonson run of thor as i can find them in decent shape with kind of whiter pages and clean uh damage free covers here is another variant that i picked up i have this issue from uncanny x-men this is issue number 354 another higher price tag on this one at ten dollars maybe because it's a variant don't know, but this is a Chris Bacalo variant, and I love his art style. I don't love his earlier art style as much, but it's still Chris Bacalo. Love to be able to get it, and it was just a dollar, so really happy to pick that up. 
going over here to Marvel's original run of G.I. Joe. This issue is pretty beat up, or this comic is pretty beat up. You can see it's kind of dirty there down in the UPC barcode area. It's got a crease in the corner. Lots of, I don't know if I can really get them to show up really well, lots of spine ticks along the spine there. So definitely a pretty beat up copy. But this is one of the issues towards the end of the volume that are harder to find to begin with, but it featured the Transformers. And I only have one or two of these so far, so I wasn't going to leave that behind even though it was beat up because it was just a buck. And if I found that in really nice condition, it probably would have been well more than a dollar. This one seems a little random. We got Star Trek number one, kind of the motion picture number one. Uh, I love Star Trek. Uh, I will admit I'm mostly a next generation DS9, Voyager, etc. type of a, a fan. I watched most of, or all of these original Star Trek movies. Uh, never read any of the comics, but gotta love Star Trek. And this had a $15 price tag on it, but it's the number one and I got it for a buck. So I wasn't gonna leave that behind. Then we shift gears over to the Dreamwave era of Transformers. I have all of the issues from this era, but I don't have all the variants. And most of these volumes that they did, they did both an Autobot and a Decepticon cover. So I'm trying to fill in those gaps as I can for cheap. And they had that one issue there that day. Then we go over here to Marvel Age. This is a volume I know some of you who watch my videos, you are working on completing this entire volume. I'm not working on the whole thing, just certain issues where I like the covers or maybe there's something inside that uh, in particular I'm looking for, but I definitely wanted to get issue number one. And if you've never held this before, it feels like it would be an incomplete comic. It's very thin. I don't know how many pages it actually has in it, but it's not a full size comic book in the sense of the number of pages. But most of the subsequent issues feel the same thickness of a standard comic book. But for those of you who don't know, Marvel Age is giving you kind of news and previews of upcoming events and books. And uh, it's, it's another book that they could that they could sell and kind of tell you about other things that they're working on. But these are fun to pick up. And at this sale, they have several. And I also got, let's see, issue 60. You got a nice Excalibur cover there. 63, some more X-Men. And a special preview of the X-Men TV show. I don't know that that's the 90s X-Men that everyone today uh, remembers so fondly. I think this was earlier, but I'm not 100% sure. Here's issue 72 with Punisher on the cover. This was on my wish list, but I can't think of why. I mean, it's fine, but I, I'm not a particular fan of the Punisher. Uh, I remember Dolph Lund Lundgren doing the movie of the Punisher. I don't know how this wound up on my wish list, but I figured in the moment I wasn't gonna question it, I was just gonna grab it for a buck and worry about it later. So now I have issue 72, whether I really wanted it or not. Then we go over here, Daredevil volume one, issue 286, just a, a one-off issue. I'm working on putting together the Anne Nocenti era of Daredevil, and she worked with a variety of artistic talent, uh, but this is one of those kind of few remaining issues I need to complete that era couple Avengers books I picked up. 298 here. This is part of the Inferno story. It's one of the tie-in issues. And I've had all the X-Men related issues related to Inferno, but not all of the other titles with tie-ins like Fantastic Four, Avengers, Spider-Man, things like that. So as I find those, I put those together and I have them all in entirety now in one binding I did last year pick up the X-Men Inferno omnibus which was a great purchase as well here's one more issue tying into Inferno the Avengers 299 I think 300 does as well but they didn't have it in there all right almost done here we got a few from the Straczynski era of Amazing Spider-Man. I'm not working on his whole volume. Uh, this is one of the eras where I'm putting together the John Romita Jr. portion, which 
Uh, Romita Jr. did the pencils at the early part of Straczynski's run on ASM. This is towards the, you know, the the back end of that run though, during Civil War. I'm primarily getting this because I want the tie-in issues to Civil War for Spider-Man. And, you know, it definitely helps it run. Garney does the art. And uh, so I they had a few of these there this day. And you can see original price tag was $3, but still a dollar. So $5.35. 536 and 537 then two more books to go here this one is the is is actually the only book that i bought that day that i wasn't looking for to begin with i, I usually wind up with a lot more of those this one i got because it caught my eye just a striking cover uh, love this laura kinney cover on wolverine number 315 this is the variant from um the National Breast Cancer Awareness Month from 2012, so from 10 years ago. Just a great cover, so I wanted to bring that one home. And then one last book to show you that I'm very, very excited to have found. It's not particularly valuable. This is a one-shot from Punisher. This is the Punisher Xmas uh, Christmas special, and I got this for the Chris Bacalo cover. I mentioned earlier that I'm a big fan of Chris Bacalo's art. This is a great example of it. And he's done a lot of covers, more so than just interiors. And I'm trying to get, you know, not all of his covers, but a lot of the ones that, that I really like, trying to collect those. And this is one that has eluded me for a long time now. Ever since I found it and added it to my wish list, I've never seen it in the wild. So I was super excited to be going through these long boxes and to come across this cover so very happy to add that to my collection there's just so much detail in his work it's so busy you really have to look at his artwork closely to start to to catch all the detail i think he's going to be doing some isn't there a, a moon knight anthology series starting up here later this year and he's going to be doing at least an issue or a story uh with uh, chris claremont writing but that is the final book from this Most Wanted Comics dollar sale. All right, that's going to do it for me, and that's going to wrap up this back issue haul, showing you all the books I got from Most Wanted Comics Everything Must Go sale with all books for a dollar a piece. I do hope you saw something that you liked. If so, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Now, if you're not quite ready for the YouTube fun to stop, I have hand selected a couple videos here for you to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.